We're going to install this flow box on top of this EX1000. Of course, we could always remote locate it on the wall as well. But for this demonstration, we're going to mount it right on top. The flow box comes with 10 feet of tubing, black and white, to connect from the membrane to the flow box and back out. And we're going to show you how this works. Flow boxes allow you to monitor the system performance of your RO machine uh, insofar that a standard EX or GX1000 comes with a flush kit. And when you want to flush the membrane, you have to open the flush valve manually. Um, and the flush kit also has an auto shutoff valve on it, which you don't really need when you're running a BP6010 booster pump. In fact, they can run better without the uh, auto shutoff valve as well. So, um, when you're running a regular standard flush kit, you don't know the membrane performance. You're guessing the system ratio is one to one, which it, it is tuned out of the box, which can shift as the water temperature shifts. And you don't know if your system is making, if the system is slowing down uh, over time. All you know is your tank maybe is not filling up as fast as it used to. Now with a flow box, you get a flow meter assembly here. And you get a stainless needle valve on the bottom. Now what this allows you to do is monitor the system ratio first and foremost. And I'll show you how to read that. Uh, on a flow box, when the, drain, when the amount of drain water equals the amount of feed water, then you're at one to one. That's the system ratio. It's not when they both read one gallon a minute, which some people uh, mistake. It's when they're equal. One part drain to one part per meter RO water. And so now you can make sure the system ratio is perfect. And that can be adjusted just by opening or closing in little increments the stainless needle valve, which will slow down or speed up the drain water to balance it with the RO water. So the adjustment is right here for the system ratio. Plus, as you're running uh, an EX or GX 600 or 1000 with a flow box, you're going to see you're making a certain amount of RO water. Okay, let's say 1.3 gallons a minute, wherever that is on the flow meter. Now, let's say six months later, you're making 0.9 gallons a minute. Well, you know that the system has slowed down 0.4 gallons a minute over six months. So you can probably guess that over the next six months, it's gonna slow down another 0.4 gallons a minute, let's say down to 0.5. So now a system that was making 1.3 gallons a minute a year later is making 0.5 gallons a minute. Now you might not notice that if you're filling up a large reservoir or tank, say a thousand gallons. You might know that it used to take 12 hours to fill this tank. Now it's taking 18 hours to fill this tank. That might be your only measure. This is a way better measure. Now I can monitor the membrane performance uh, weekly, daily, weekly, monthly, and I can monitor the system ratio, which often changes as the water temperature changes. That's the feed water temperature. We kind of call it the seasonal temperature effect. Um, and that is when water gets colder, it's in a sense more dense and harder to pump through a membrane like this. So uh, what you'll notice is that the flow rate of the permeate will slow down. And when water's warmer, it's easier to pump through a membrane and so the, the flow rate of the permeate will speed up. You'll also notice when the water's more dense, the pump pressure will go up because it has to work harder to push it through. So in the winter, we generally turn our pumps down a little and we'll have to adjust the waste ratio as well. See, waste ratios can fluctuate with the water temperature. When the water's more dense and colder, it wants to move uh, to the drain passages of the RO more easily. It's harder to push through the membrane sheet. So in the winter, we'll have to adjust the ratio and turn our pump down generally. And in the, in the heat of the summer, let's say your feed water is 80 degrees, you'll adjust your waste ratio again and turn your pump up a little bit. So a lot of people don't know that because you can't visually see that without a flow box. So that's why we make them. Um, the differences aren't huge, but over a period of time, let's say a year, you could wind up not having enough water. So a flow box can prevent that by letting you monitor the system and seeing the waste ratio and then seeing how much it's putting out. Now we're gonna uh, install a flow box. 
Here's a unit that's plumbed up with a BP6010 pump. A lot of people have this combination. So now they say, I'm going to add a flow box, get some flow meters, and monitor the system. The first thing you don't need is the flush kit that's hooked up to this RO currently. You can actually disconnect this and put it aside for later use. You really don't need it. You don't need the ASV, which works, which helps the RO shut off with a float valve, because you're not going to use a float valve. You have, you're, you have to shut this pump off. This pump will not shut off with a float valve. Uh, you don't need the flow restrictor on it because you now have your own stainless steel flow restrictor here. And you don't need a flush valve because you have it here. So this drain assembly can be disconnected from the RO and put aside. We're just going to unhook the drain assembly. And I'm going to dump a little water. That's fine. Next thing I'm going to do is loosen these quarter 20 stainless socket cap screws. And then we're going to mount the flow box right on top. When you mount a flow box on top of an EX series, we have a couple spacers here. And we're just going to put them there. They come with the flow box. And we just put it on top. And we have a couple longer bolts that come with the flow box as well. And just put them through and thread them in. Really simple. I'll do this side. I'll just line up the front. I'll give it a little turn. Okay, and that's about it for mounting a flow box. Super simple. Now we're going to plumb up some tubing to the flow box. So once again, we put our drain uh, and flush kit aside because we don't need it. So first we'll hook up the drain side. And the drain tubing is just going to come around and plug right in to the stainless valve here on the, on the, uh, right here in the middle. So I'm just going to bring it around. I'm going to cut the tubing a little wild and long just so you can see it easier. And just plumb it right into there. Really simple. Uh, now you take the top of this flow meter, which is the drain out, and just run that to drain. And it's that simple. I'll leave that on the side for now. Now the permeate side of the membrane, the filtered water out, plug the 3 8 white tubing into that. And you're just going to come around and plug it right into the bottom of the permeate flow meter. Really simple. Just like that. And you'll take the other piece of tubing and this will go out to your storage tank or reservoir. And that's it for connecting a flow box. Really simple. Okay, now we'll spin it around and start it up. Show you how it works. <laughs> 